you start, can I start webinar? Say yes. Uh, hang on, hang on. Uh oh, hang I started. Um, I said, uh, it's live. Ah, I pushed the button. Right, Sorry. Live. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah. We need to look in among our participants if we have our guest to promote. Okay. Perfect. All right. Welcome everybody. How many we got? Sixty-four. We should have had a we should have had a guest on. A, we should have had our little gamble on, on how many people we'll see. I hope more people come today. Today is a day of big announcements. We're excited to share all these with you live. Welcome everybody. For I'm going to highlight you, right. if that's okay. Spotlight you. Or is that right? right? Okay. Let me figure out how to do this. I can't seem to do it. Okay. Click. Spotlight for everyone. There we go. Okay. You are spotlit. And we're, we're past 410. We should start. Welcome, everybody, to CS621C. Woo! Hello. All right. You're up, Bora. I'm up. Yep. All right. Hi, everyone. Well, um, I am trying to still spot our. Uh, I, I, I can change slides for today. I can change no, 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 the slides. <laughs> no, you're oh, good. You know, oh, you're looking for, a, a, looking for our. Oh, in for a participants guest, list. Guest. Right, right. Yeah, in the participants list because I sent her both. Uh, right. Uh, the panelist invitation and the regular <laughs> invitation, or I sent a regular invitation to her admin. And I, I you know, the, doing these kind of things is a non trivial thing. Um, if you're in a government office. <laughs> All right. um, hi, everybody. I'm hoping everybody is doing better now uh, with the project behind us. And we are going to try to help really everybody get um, through the, the next few weeks in, in a better way. So um, agenda for today is um, we want to go over the week four. We are looking at a very um, self-contained module that is RISC V. We have covered um, almost all of it. So if you watch the, this week's lectures, you are ready to go to cover homework four and the uh, projects uh, two A and B. So it's just the projects time. So things will should go relatively smoothly and there should be enough time. There are a few more important announcements, but I'm going to save that for a few minutes later. Now, or can I just um, add a quickie? Add a quickie yes. here while, while we're here. We're kind of doing our little like, you know, two, two microphone uh, thing. Most people have seen a C-like language before. That was the requirement for this class. But most people have not seen any kind I'll just add this, any kind of assembly code. I mean, it'd be rare if somebody came into 61 c having touched assembly before. So basically this is new for everybody and we understand that. And we're hoping that through our courses of the lab and the homework and the project, we're kind of ramping up, assuming you've done none of this before. Remember the C was, you've mostly done algorithms before, done software engineering before, and a C-like language, this is just a C's particulars. And we try to, hopefully you enjoyed project 1A one and 1B one in terms of making it fun with some graphical output and this life and all that stuff. But two is new, and we're trying to channel in some of the excitement of, of the machine learning part. You want to talk about a little bit about that, what 2A is going to do for them, but I'm sure they've seen it. But it's exciting to try to bring this really fun idea of, you know, number recognition, but do it at the level of the assembler. So this is new, and I hope you enjoyed Project 2A as well. At the end, we'll always take a survey of what projects you've liked. And in the past, people have liked one, and they've also liked two. So hopefully, um, you'll enjoy two as well. Yeah, and I mean, there is a natural downshift in speed that we uh, did uh, going into this five module. Um, the, the first time a slower speaker than, as that, than Dan, uh, as we have already established. <laughs> and then I really want one, I, I started recording essentially at the speed that, uh, you know, the pace that we would deliver this in live lectures. And then I realized that I'm just not giving enough details and i'm not i'm never stop even with myself i'm never really stopping never letting this information sink in so i watched my own videos and said oh i need to slow down a bit and i need to you know double up on explanations so what you find out that the videos are a little bit longer now um but um they, they, i'm repetitive so i mean if you feel like that it is uh, um it is too much, you know, skip, you know, fast forward, you know, get the 10 second forward <laughs> button going. But try to, you know, I try to always explain the same thing from approximately two angles every 
time there is a new concept. I try to give two explanations and hopefully I'm su succeeding. Um, uh, we know that people have not seen machine language and people have not seen assembly before, but it is intuitive. It is very simple. Um, there are no deep concepts, but it does, it is different way of thinking. So spend some time um, try to figure that out. From what am I seeing from Piazza questions that have come through so far, people seem to, to get it, um, but feel, you know, if something, if there are concepts that are missing or they're not clear, keep, keep calling these questions. And, and I, I want to add, make sure that people, if they, didn't, if they missed this last time, we're the number one department in the world, arguably, in computer science and computer engineering. I can't think of anybody better on our entire faculty, the top in the world than Bora to deliver these lectures on Risk Five. So I'm just so proud to be able to learn from Bora. I'm just, I wanna say, sit back and just, I'm, I'm in awe of all that you know about Risk Five. You know the history, you know the backstory, and you know where it's going. It's just, I learned so much from listening to you. So I just wanted to add that as the end. Because I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I don't deserve that, but that's okay. <laughs> um, one thing that they did notice is that uh, some of our, uh, you know, somebody just spotted that three-year-old bug that we have in encoding. <laughs> and one thing that, you know, why these bugs exist, uh, students don't know this. Um, RISC V has, since it's so new, has changed some of the encoding, so instructions. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that- The living, breathing uh, beast. You gotta keep up with it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. No, but it's not frozen since last yeah. year, since fall last year, it is frozen. So the RISC V spec is ratified, although, you know, it does not be reflected in every single one of our slides. Um, so we need to do some effort uh, um, in, in cleaning that. And, and it's almost like we need to draw, draw, draw a line in the sand and say, you're learning Risk V version bloop. Is it version 2020 October? What version are we learning as we're kind of working with something? So maybe, are there, are there big lines in the sand where they say this is the new, like, you know, C99, C18. Yeah. Are, are there lines in the sand where they say this is a new change and we're giving it a new name? It's, it's always important yes. to know what, what those are exactly. Unfortunately, they just give them numbers. So whatever <laughs> you want, dot seven, dot six, or no, something no. like that, is ratified. Right, right. So, but that's the one that went through the through the vote, and that is yep. the one that is frozen. Yep. There are a few interesting things that happen there. They drop three instructions from the base, or uh, maybe more, five, six instructions from the base. So actually, what we teach in sixty one C, that you'll find out when you watch this, is literally the base instruction set for RV thirty two I. So. Um, um, any out of the shelf, uh, of the shelf uh, compiler should work with your code. If we get uh, if we get all these encodings right, um, so a, a, a commercial compiler should be able to co compile your code, not just Venus, which is quite exciting. And you can do things with it um, later on. And you know when there is really this risk five. Um, PC, you can run it on a risk five PC. Whoever gets their hands on that. Quite, I mean, that's quite interesting, quite amazing, I think. Um, um, so, um, but I want to move on because we have other important stuff. Um, we were supposed to have a very important guest, but I think uh, the guest is, uh, we, we might have overestimated our abilities or her abilities, but let me ride through a few pieces of news um, and let me see if I can share some slides. Um, uh, th some people might have seen uh, some of these news uh, before um, that uh, what you'll find out a lot of research in the US in um, leading universities funded by um, the agency that is called DARPA, which stands for Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. And some people think, I mean, that they do some very creepy stuff. No, their idea is to move forward the technological agenda to, to um, you know, if you read the mission statement, is to prevent technological surprises. Uh, DARPA was founded in um, uh, 1959 um, after U.S. was surprised by the launch of a Sputnik, and uh, at that time, uh, President Kennedy said, "This is not going to happen again." Uh, started DARPA to prevent te a technological surprise, and then I think that has been amended. You know, to prevent technological surprises by creating them. And uh, there are quite a few things that have, that have happened that are very relevant to this class and the things that we do. In this slide, what you will see, um, there have been projects uh, with uh, quite a bit of impact. 
um, they started this thing that was called ARPANET that turned into an internet. You know, minor accomplishment. I mean, that was a tiny project. That was <laughs> it's true. <laughs> seen, That's exactly right. DARPA, uh, That's to exactly connect right. a couple of uh, terminals back then. Um, and now that's it. Uh, there was a big program uh, back in the 70s and 80s to develop um, very large scale integration, meaning better and better chips to ride the Moore's law. Uh, we talked about Moore's law, but every few years there was somebody that came up with a reason why will Moore's law, law stop, uh, why will, will it end. Um, so initially Moore projected it was going to go till 1975 and there are people that were, you know, having the, the end dates, you know, written, you know, 1978, 1980, 1983. <laughs> I mean, every few years there was a reason why there should yeah. be no more Moore's law. And um, but some folks in DARPA took that as a mission. Well, we are not going to let Moore's Law stop because it's a good thing for everything. Um, um, so risk one and two were DARPA projects. Some people did not know that. I mean, they're I, didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> but they were funded by, uh, by, uh, uh, by, by DARPA. Um, similarly, risk five was not embedded by DARPA, but our first realizations of risk five were part of DARPA projects. It was kind of a funny thing. Then uh, DARPA called for building specialized computers, and it, it, that's really difficult to do uh, with um, somebody else's instruction set that you can't touch. But we had our own instruction set that you could do whatever we wanted. <laughs> we could build a specialized computer. Uh, we clearly um, aced that program. Um, um so um well um darpa has a new set of things that they're after now there is a big piece of news so these people that we have elected uh, to represent us in congress and senate do tend to make us make us upset but occasionally they do get together and make these big bipartisan moves and the big one that has been boiling or cooking up this summer is about um, the so-called CHIPS bill. That is uh, supposed to be $22 billion total bill to advance uh, semiconductors in the US. Um, that involves some manufacturing. Some people have seen about a fab coming up in, in, uh, in um, Arizona, but also a lot of um, funding for innovation, to innovate things, um, to extend uh, whatever is the Moore's law and whatever comes after the Moore's law that will help develop this technology. So uh, in that sense, um, DARPA got a new director and she was supposed to join us. She might join us, we don't know. Uh, we'll still... Um, um, I'm, I'm looking, I don't, I don't see her on the, on the yeah. attendees list, I'm hoping. That she didn't just type yeah, her in the You know, today was her first job, uh, first, first day at first, the, first the job, first day in the office uh, taking the job. She's, I think, only the second or third female to lead the DARPA. Um, and um, she, her previous appointment was at Berkeley, which is very interesting. So we tried to get her on the first day, but I'm guessing she is busy. She might join us. Um, uh, do, you know, do you know the size she, of the budget she controls, Bora? Do you know, like, I mean, DARPA is a uh, very deep pocketed organization, much deeper than NSF. It's a few you know billion, big, I think. It's a, it's, it's a, it's an annual budget. It probably goes from, uh, I, you know, uh, the, the, uh, I think about 300 million out of this bill are supposed to be managed by DARPA. So this chips bill is enormous. It's too big for DARPA. So they're, wow. they're supposed to do the research, and I think about two to three hundred million are going to be managed by DARPA to try to advance things. Because DARPA has a ability to you know, start the projects, manage them, review them, kill them as they don't turn out to be working outright, and keep keep going. Um, yeah. I, I'm just Easily. looking up while, while you while you were doing this. I was just looking this up. I'm not, we're trying to stall here, but I, I was looking this up, and it says that DARPA's annual budget is 3.56 billion, NSF's annual budget is 8.3 billion, so it's bigger than DARPA's. But the size budget, CISE, which is the Computing and Information Technology, is a smaller part of that. So comparing size to that, DARPA's a lot. Of, I mean, DARPA's everything, you know, but but the computing part of NSF is smaller than than that. 
Yeah, the DARPA is focused primarily on technology, right? Uh, yeah, NSF funds definitely. all kinds of things, and we will have somebody from Raw NSF science, later, too. assuming that you can, you know, there is a lot of science that is outside of technology. Uh, DARPA is straight engineering. Um, no. So, um, can I bring up another? On, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, can ahead. I just bring up another computing the news that we don't have a slide for, but I just want to talk about them. I'll, I'll even just I'll, I'll highlight because let me just grab my my thing and highlight myself really fast. Boop. Uh, spotlight, remove spotlight. Okay, um, so I wanted to add that there is a, boink, there is a, um, they would have had had uh, some lawyers not come in to, to play to, to order a stay order, they would have quit TikTok and WeChat. Um, and there were a lot, boy, oh boy, there were a lot of concern about many people who are using this for their own livelihoods. A lot of people are using, more people using WeChat for their livelihoods than, than TikTok, but there are also some artists who are using TikTok for their livelihoods. And it looks like both of those are going to be resolved now. It looks like that um, TikTok is going to be bought by uh, Walmart and Oracle. Oracle's here in the Bay Area. And it looks like WeChat was just going to be canceled altogether. And there was a, a, a judge ordered a stay of that order. So right now, th those people would have, I mean, you could have your whole business based on WeChat and the community you've built around that. It's mostly a Chinese app. It's amazing how you can put your credit card in there, do so many things through that. But it, it sounds like um, they're right now, they're just, they're in hold, a holding pattern right now. A lot of people were trying to download all the pictures and all the context they could as much as possible. But even those are very really hard to do because you only know them through WeChat. So this is for a big community who uses WeChat as their lifeblood. This was a really, really big deal. And it looks like they're just going to be on hold now. So, so that's an issue. Um, so we'll see what that. But it's, it, was, it, it was scary. It was really hard. I mean, I was feeling for all the people who were just using it, passively using it, you know, not harming, not, you know, good working American companies using WeChat to connect with their customers and all of that would have been gone. But like, imagine taking your phones away and you don't have any other way to find the customers and all those contacts you've had. So crazy. Um, so uh, I think that's, they're both resolved. I think that TikTok is going to be fine. What I'm hearing is 20% is going to be owned by Walmart and Oracle and 80% will still be owned by China, but there'll be enough seats on the board to be able to make the people in Washington happy. I don't know what the future of WeChat is, but if, I, I don't know. But I would take your data off of it if you can. If there's a way to get, grab your data off of it and grab the context off of it, try to do that because who knows what will happen when the stay gets lifted. But that's it. I just wanted to add that. And that was relevant for a lot of people in CS10. I wanted to share that as well here. So uh, in the meantime, while Dan was talking, I found a spare, <laughs> a spare uh, guest for today. Thank you, spare guest. It's uh, Jared Zerby. Let's allow him to talk. Oh, uh, wonderful. Hi, Jared. Good to see you. Um, I don't know if you guys remember. Hi. Is he allowed to talk? Yeah, he's allowed to talk. Sure. Uh, all right. <laughs> I guess... Uh, yeah, I, I've even got my uh, my BWC uh, anniversary uh, jacket on here. If I can get my video going, uh, how are you guys doing? This, is, this seems like a, a pretty fun crowd. You good all to see uh, you. Made, it, made it through uh, the first uh, first assignment, so that's that's all good. Assembly language language programming. I want to you know give a shout out to that. That was uh, you know one of my uh, first uh, joys in life was, was doing that and i think the students should all really appreciate the the efficiency and the speed that you that you get by bypassing something from a compiler so by making life easier for programmers you make the you know you make things run less efficiently and uh, you know that's a, there's a lot to be gained when you when you really put the time in uh to, to do assembly level point programming so i hope you guys get appreciation of that and, yeah, and what goes, and, to realize Jared is the um, works at Apple, and he gave that big uh, introduction to their chips program. Uh, <laughs> chips program it's our it's, ago. it's our it's our little chips program at Berkeley is what it is. It's uh, we encourage encourage people to you know look more deeply into that and to want to encourage people to apply to also to the masters and, and PhD, uh, you know, scholarships and fellowships uh, to think about that if they're interested in, in VLSI, you know, and, and if they're interested in hardware. I think this is a great class to, to really kind of get back and forth with and play in both, both sides of the, you know, of the world uh, really, really dig into the hardware uh, aspects of software. All right. And to, to yeah. whet their appetite. I mean, this, the goal of this is to get people excited about it, to be able to say, wow, I'm going to take that upper division course and that upper division course, and then boom, maybe there's a career path for me. So this is the beginning for a lot of people of a whole career path. So I'm excited yeah. to get people excited about this material. Yeah. We'll see what happens with this chips bill. I mean, that, well, that may change quite a bit of a landscape uh, on, 
I mean, it's not nothing is set, especially not these days. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. um, but it may change completely the landscape of jobs around here and, and the perspective of what, you know, where do things go and where, where do things fall? Of course, I mean, when somebody dangles $22 billion, there is quite a few of hands that go up, <laughs> up in the air, <laughs> ready to... Um, Sure, sure. Well, but I mean, I think I think when you're, especially when you're a student and you're starting to, you know, you're trying to figure out your career, when you see moves occurring like this, you know, try and think in, at a meta level. Try and think about not just that, you know, there is 22 billion, or you know, I mean, it sounds like a big number. It is a big number, but try and think about why, you know, why are why your organization is doing the things that they're doing, you know, and like even even for the like our kickoff the other week, right? You know, why is Apple spending all this time and money and resources? You know, I got fancy slides with animations and all, you know, all this. Why, why, why is this person here talking to me about this? You know, and, and, and the reason is because it's important to them in some, in some meaningful and impactful way, right? You know, and and uh, certainly at Apple over the last um, oof, 13 years, I guess, uh, you know, the amount of silicon that's, and the impact of silicon has become massive, right? So the impact of, uh, of being able to control our own destiny is, is, a, 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 is, is enormous. Uh, you know, when you see what can be done when you do custom silicon, it's, it's quite fantastic. Yeah. And I think uh, Apple's unique in that way to control both the hardware and the software, but the hardware, they didn't fully control all the way down to the silicon. So now it's like from all the, from the pixel at the top level of the, of the GUI, all the way down through the software to the lower layers of the OS, that's all controlled by them to the, to the hardware. And they're building the hardware all the way down to the lowest level. So it's very exciting to kind of remove all the OEMs, <laughs> all the yeah. other OEMs that are out of the picture and make it Apple all the way down. You know, the picture we've shown in 6 c from the top to the bottom, imagine one company controlling all of it. I know of no other company that does that, by the way. Microsoft, Oracle, nobody else goes top to the bottom like you do. So it's, I mean, even Intel doesn't, right? They don't write software at the top level. So yeah. I don't know of anybody else who has that control to be able to give, deliver that user experience. It's, I mean, I'm a yeah. big Apple fan. I mean, maybe you can tell, but my point is, I don't know of anybody else who does that ever. Ever in the history. Well, Rieta, we'll just point it out. Yeah, vertical integration. I mean, I, there was IBM, right? So IBM was the classic fully vertically integrated company. You, know, you buy a you know big uh, 360, you know, and they and then they and they had their fabs at one end and they had their software at the other end. And and you know the 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 danger when you have that is like how do you avoid collapsing on yourself or having yeah. these kind of uh, you know uh, inter group fights, right? You know, there's this famous mm. sociological experiments where anybody, they could, they could take a group of people and then divide them in two anyway, you know, like, you know, the people that are taller or shorter or men or women or, you know, people born on odd days or even days. And any time they did a division, they would just, they would eventually start competing and warring against each other. So, you know, whenever you, when, uh, so, so part of the, I think the, the, the amazing thing for me, I've been at Apple seven years. The amazing thing for me is that, that people, do you have, you know, oh, you know, just like, oh, what about this and what about that? You know, or a conflict on this mm. and then there's mm. and there's the classic, you know, uh, lots and lots of heavy, heavy arguments. But then people will line up behind the product. So you just go, and, and so when there's that defining force and there's the overriding force, it's almost like, it's almost like you imagine that uh, you're in a, in a, if you were in the, you know, the army in 1944 or something like that, like how, how would you possibly organize a group like that? Well, at least they're uniting behind, you know, right. fighting a common en enemy, you know, yeah. and for yeah. us, it's uniting behind delivering a, an amazing product experience, right? So, so when you have that uniting force, it, it makes a big difference. And, and I think that helps, uh, helps, helps the companies from, from, from collapsing when, when they, when they become, you know, this vertical integration, challenge but what an opportunity you're right i mean it's it's just an amazing thing to be able to talk to software guys and you know just today we're talking with algorithms guys and we're talking about you know i was just talking with process people you know yesterday and it's it's just uh, it's 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 amazing it's, it's, <laughs> also, by the way it's also no excuses right before well we would do this <laughs> except that except that we can't control the hardware and we right. only wish that they would add a feature to the instruction set no go fix it go make a new instruction exactly. set exactly go, go, go make a new go make a feature go make a new command and do that no more excuses it's a fascinating thing you know that's right they don't the, own their own instruction set however well, no that's true that's, uh, uh, but we have our architectural license so you'd be amazed at the kinds of things 
things that are in our instruction set that you might just avoid. Right. Yeah, they have an, and there is a magic word, architectural license. Uh, for That's a, right. A, architectural license. For, for keeps a, you that keeps costs you. a lot. Uh, right. uh, not very many people can afford that. That's true. Um, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that, there's um, a question. So, can, I, can I show this question in the chat for you, by the way? Yeah, um, yeah. What does this mean if you own the entire top to bottom system, vertical integration, about antitrust? Uh, isn't there something about competition or something? And I think you want to respond to what, what that issue might be. Oh, we have lots of competition. I mean, I don't think there's any, there's no, there's no, <laughs> there's no, no worries about competition. You know, they have, right. uh, if you look at, at the, you know, Android ecosystem, or you look at uh, all different kinds of, I mean, you know, even Mac PCs and the volumes out there and, and, and on phones, on, on anything, there's plenty and plenty and plenty of competition. The, the the difference uh, I think what you're what you're thinking about is uh, is the vertical integration versus like you know horizontal right. exactly uh, that's, horizontal that's what it is. kind of you know exactly. spread right you know if yeah, if, exactly. if, if if somebody dominates the entire you know disk drive industry and then they, right. then they like they they own the whole industry and then all of a sudden hmm you know it isn't very long <laughs> from that moment where there's some clever sales guy who goes huh. I wonder what says the price of all these drives. Oh, it's me. You know, and then they, right. they, they can, yeah, and that's exactly. called a monopoly. And so that's, you exactly. know, that's different. Vertical integration I mean, it, is, is, is yeah. only a small piece of a lots of different things that you need to bring your product to market. So, right. so, uh, you know, and even in that respect, we don't own our fabs, right? We right. Uh, we're a fabulous semiconductor company. Um, so we know what we're good at and we know what we're you know, not as good at and, and uh, running fabs is not our forte, but, but it's an amazing kind of uh, technological exploration you can do with fabs when you are a company that, you know, that, that has I mean, the size and impact. So the analogy is what if Tesla decided to make the tires and make the, you know, the, they obviously they, they buy leather right. from other people and they buy tires from other people and buy sure. other things. What if they made everything and they make a factory? They still right. are many comp competitors for electric cars. They certainly are. There's no antitrust questions about Tesla. There's a ton of competition in that electric car market. So you could still do what they, you know, they could model Apple top to bottom, but still there's no antitrust issues because there's a ton of people at that level, at the level of selling cars, there's a ton of people in that market, just as Absolutely. there's a lot of people in the iPhone, Mac, et cetera, oh, yeah. watches market, every market, you're, it's, it's clogged. So that's not yeah. an issue there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, IBM, IBM sells still vertically integrated stuff. I mean, you can buy Z series chips from from IBM. I mean, you you only can buy a Z series machine, mm -hmm. and you know that's what you buy if you're Bank of America or airline or <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I mean, those things, and you know, they, they run only one application. It's like DP two, <laughs> and uh, you know, sure. database system, and that's it. Um, you know that that you know they may change the user interface here and there, but you know it is every new generation of Z series is there to buy um, to 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 support the the giant databases. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I think the one of the things that you have to realize also is that one of the challenges these days in SOCs is you know, we just had an announcement uh, earlier in the week that included the. This latest SOC, there's a 14 SOC, which it's got over 11 billion transistors on it, and that's just the amount of complexity involved in something like that is uh, is is uh, mind-numbing. Not just in terms of like you know, be plunking down every transistor, but just managing managing the all the different blocks, managing the communication between the blocks, managing the team managing the who does what and how they all communicate to, to each other and how you verify something that has the kind of unbridled complexity of, of something that has that many layers of it. It's like a small city, right? You know, you have to, uh, so in, in many aspects, there are a lot of the, the things that you learn when you're doing software at a high level and kind of managing these, the, the programs with these modules that are coming in and out are very similar. There's lots of uh, similarities in terms of, uh, of SOC integration as well. Yeah, um, but by the way, I mean, the, what we believe, we, we have been talking, and also in some of uh, our office hours, we've been talking about and the Moore's law and the need for specialization. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to do it. <laughs> and I think uh, Apple is showing the way, well, one, uh, that seems to be the right way of doing specialization, and you will have to, to do it. I mean, you can't just go buy chips in a grocery store <laughs> and uh, and work or best buy mm -hmm. and specialize those um and that's why somebody was asking oh, what are other companies doing? well everybody's trying to do that but it's a lot harder 
to capture a market like that, mm -hmm. uh, like cell phones at the moment. The big story, the big question there is what is, will Apple do next? <laughs> We're going to find that out. Uh, <laughs> the time well, might... I, yeah, I mean, there's the, the funny thing is that, and if I were, if I were to kind of uh, put myself you know, outside the company again and then look in, I think, you know, look, looking at Apple from the outside, I think that people don't really understand how many different engineering programs we have running in parallel and how lean an operation we really run. I mean, every program is a lean program. It's not like, I mean, and there are lots and lots and lots of them. And, and there are programs where you just, you just hammer on something for a long time and then go, you know, this, it's missing this fundamental ingredient. We'll put it on the shelf. And then five years later, this fundamental ingredient comes along and you go, ah, let me take this off the shelf and restart it. Mm -hmm. you know, um, that, help, that happens a lot. I mean, if, if you were, if you two, like say just you, Dan and Bora, were mm -hmm. to guess, like how long do you, you know, you heard this announcement about a Max going to Apple Silicon, right? Mm -hmm. So how long do you think that's been in discussion? <laughs> I'll throw Ten a number years. out just to give you a bit. I'll say a year just so you can blow me away with how long it takes to. <laughs> Bora, was years, much, Bora was much closer. Yeah, 10 yeah, years. This is, is, 10 years is, wow. is more, more the proper order, order of wow. magnitude. And, and when, when we're in discussion of something, that doesn't mean that like, you know, someone goes to a whiteboard and like draws a picture and goes, oh, wouldn't this be nice? And then, you know, it's X stare around and say, oh, yeah. No, no. When <laughs> discussion at Apple means that you go build stuff. You test it, you try it, you poke it, you prod it, you know, you, all this kind of stuff, right? So, I mean, that means that, that you can imagine how much, how much investigation goes on and kind of in parallel. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's really an engineering, uh, uh, you know, um, just a powerhouse of lots of different parallel engineers. Do, 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 do they all, I mean, this is maybe too much, too much inside baseball. Do, do you ever <laughs> grow two competing groups to see who would win? Like it's the idea of like, we don't know what the you future know, is. Read, so let's, let's have a I, couple of these different groups and only one's going to succeed at the end of the day, but you're all kind of in a race against each other. And I read that, I, you know, I read that, in the, I don't like know. The, the Steve Jobs thing that, you know, like, oh, he didn't tell this group about it and this thing. And oh. Yeah, you know, and I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I read about that in the, in the past. I'm not aware of anything like that mm. going on right now. Everybody's too, too lean. And if you find out something that somebody else is doing that's similar to what you're doing, you go, hey, hey, what are you doing you know, over there? And, and you try and pool some effort, right? You try and sure, collaborate sure. And, <laughs> and figure out what's going on. But there's a yeah. lot of little <laughs> investigations too. Two super quick questions. Uh, yeah. um, uh, I mean, one, uh, because we have a few other important announcements. Great. Um, um, so the, the first uh, one, I mean, um, Apple went public about a year ago that Apple will make a modem, uh, 5G modem. Um, that is a good thing. So I, I guess they've been thinking about that for about a couple of years before then. So I think that you, you can start your stopwatches and see when is that going to hit the market. <laughs> <laughs> I think they license Qualcomm for another five years. So you, you, you can think about that. That's about seven year uh, time uh, to, to, to own that kind of a thing. But here is, a, <laughs> Jared, you don't have to come. There is a good uh, question here. I don't know if you can answer this one. This is from Benjamin. It says, Jared mentioned that we should appreciate assembly because of its speed and efficiency. Mm -hmm. But uh, at companies like Apple, is it assemb uh, is the assembly almost entirely abstracted beneath compilers, or is there still development done entirely in assembly? For even so, higher orders of optimization, like yeah. peaking oh, yeah. below, so, peaking below I, the layer just to optimize your final code. Yeah. Yeah. So I just I, I just heard a a story uh, related by somebody who Vora knows very well, um, and. And the, the story basically goes that software developers work, you know, they'll, they'll try at the highest level they can, and then it doesn't perform the way they need it to. And then they'll, then they'll try and like, you know, get rid of some of the efficiencies and then it still doesn't work. The way they, and then they'll scratch their heads and like go parallelize and then it doesn't work. You know, so, so the answer is that to, is there, is there firmware assembly level programming, um, you know, work done at all levels of, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, my advice to students is find the thing, find the, the layer of abstraction that you like playing in the, the layers. There's, you know, most people like playing in multiple layers. Find the layers that you like playing in and just get really good at it. You know, just really just jump in, 
you know, with all, you know, all with both feet and, and just really, in, really uh, immerse yourself in that. And then also get really good. So that's what we call the T model. So you get to you own your area, kind of own your number one is what we call it. Own your, your number one area of specialization. But then also understand and get some, some curiosity and, and, and breadth as well. So you want to own some adjacencies too, because you want to see, okay, well, I can bring my expertise here, over here, or over here. And then in, you know, who knows what, in 20 years, you may actually decide, oh, I want to, you know, I've, I've, I've gotten really good at this and I've kind of drilled this to the point where I, I'm, I'm more interested in this over here. So it's, it's a great way of, of appreciating not just your one singular area, but also, you know, other areas. But uh, yeah, I guess to answer the question succinctly, absolutely, all levels of programming, <laughs> from the highest level, you know, to the very, very bottom, bottom of the stack. So, thank you, Jared, for stepping in. Uh, I, we, I mean, I'm assuming that uh, Victoria is not has doesn't have an easy time calling in from Washington uh, <laughs> on the first day of a job, and probably not easy to communicate out of that building. Yeah. Uh, to, to you know, Zoom may not be. That, that actually... That's true. Zoom might not be blessed. That's true. I never thought about that. <laughs> She's trying to ping into the yeah. firewall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'll back yeah. out. Um, thanks uh, a lot. Thank anyway, you. Thank you for dropping in. Again. That's wonderful. Yeah, the, that was yeah. great. Jared will be back, I think, with a few friends at some later date. Hey, uh, that's be fun. Right. Look forward to that. All right. Uh, great to see you, Jared. Thank you. Uh, I'll, we have a few other important announcements. Uh, let's move it over to uh, to Dan. You. I'm happy. Uh, to, I'm happy to take it over. Yeah, happy to take it over. Uh, spotlight me if we can, and then I'm I'll jump in. To I think you okay. are spotlighted. I am spotlighted. And then I will go to my slides, which are right here. Boop. Spotlight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Spotlight me. Can you see me? Jared's still there. We're going to drop him off of the spotlight, I think. Let me figure out how to do that. Uh, you can't see my slides or me because he's still got it. How do we do this? I see you. I can really? see you on your totally slides. Good. Oh, yeah. really? Funny. Really weird. I, I, don't see, uh, I Okay. Uh, All I see I, is I Jared in, in this. Like okay. Well, wonderful. I, I'll assume that you can see me because I can't see me in my Zoom window. It's a little weird. All right. Schedule. Um, here's what the schedule looks like. Uh, we, last Friday, um, actually two Fridays ago, 9-11 uh, was the risk intro, risk five intro. Last week was load store decisions and procedures. That basically taught you how to code. By the end of those four lectures, I could say, take the C code and translate it to risk five and you should be able to make that happen. So that's pretty cool. This week is about lifting the hood even more. It's an exciting week where we say, you know what, let's actually see if we can move down to the machine code layer and show you how to encode these as ones and zeros. You're gonna need that when you get to my lecture, which I just finished on Friday, which is C-A-L-L, -L, compiling, assembling, linking, and loading. And to understand how the whole thing works, we're gonna take a C program and go all the way down to the actual A dot out. And then even the, the last L of call is, what does a loader do to actually run that program? So that's pretty cool, exciting. This is a fun, this is a fun, this is a fun series of lectures that really lifting the onion, revealing the, the layers of the onion to show you how this stuff works. If you ever wonder how this stuff works, this is the week where we're kind of making the connection between C to the, to the hardware, it's pretty exciting. After this, after this week, we're not showing what the week after this is. Um, it's all hardware. We, it's almost like taking a bite of, a, of an In-N-Out burger. You come from the top, your teeth bite down until you get to the meat. The meat's the ISA layer. And then the bottom teeth come in and bite from the bottom up as you're biting through bread and then lettuce and tomato. So we're going to start from the bottom then of the hardware layer and come all the way up and we're going to meet in the middle. So it's like your teeth, I'll show you a video. Your teeth actually meet in the middle and that's a special magical day. The reason we bring up the timings of this is that uh, all of this material, Risk Five and the lower levels of, of instructional coding and, and call are needed for your homework four, which again is gonna be due 9.30, and your project 2A, which is due 9.28 and 10.5, okay? So pretty cool stuff. Let's go to the next slide. We got some big announcements. I, I need some, to, go, 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 go back, go back, go back, go back, the, go back, the, go back, go back. No, you're good, you're good, you're good. Oh yeah. Uh, um, a few, few important things uh, about this. It is just seven lectures with quite a bit of a payload. Um, so it's, you know, six hours of videos with a big payload. Um, uh, quicker questions. We have increased slightly, just tiny bit uh, difficulty of, uh, of quicker questions. So they, they make a little bit better bridge towards the homeworks. Homeworks have had, you know, we added a little bit more of a, of a difficulty to the homework, such that they start looking more like um, midterm problems, but they're not quite at the midterm problem level. So we'll need to practice a little bit 
But if you do the project, if you do the homework, that gets you to the project. If you do the project, you're ready to practice midterms. Um, and we will try to prevent surprises. We know that we surprise you. We will try to uh, be absolutely clear. We surprise you in a quest. Uh, we will be absolutely clear what to expect in the, in the midterm. So midterm covers this material. This is a great block. You know, there's an advantage of being there are not many advantages of being uh, online, but this is one advantage that you have nicely packaged seven videos that cover uh, a complete module, everything that you need to know from assembly to actually instruction and coding. And majority of the things that we actually need to do projects to A and B are in the first RISC-V uh, assembly um, language um, sets of videos and in the call, a little bit of that in the call. And that's it. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Here we go. Important Big announcements. Stuff. We have we have we have the next set of slides. So First big announcement. This is some time. Don't show, don't show, don't show. You, you no, move no. The, you, ah. Back, back. Uh, out of control, no. Yeah. <laughs> this one. I got to control it. I've got my PowerPoint. You gave it all away. Ah, oh, oh, no. no. Don't read it. Oh, here we go. Okay. No, but it's you still. No, it was me, but then you clicked on a new slide and then oh, it, no, it, 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 no, no, it's all right. I thought you were that, that, sorry. It's okay. So, because we're both the co piloting, you could like override anything anyway, longer yeah. stuff. So, first one is that we're listening. Thank you for so much for the feedback. We want to continue to listen to what's happening and we want to respond to everything that are going wrong. We want to try to reduce the pain points. So, the first is quest grading concerns. I want to add, we've just seen the quest numbers of the grades, they've come out. Um, we were looking forward out of 30 points to having the quest average be 25, 22, 23. I mean, high. The quest is 15. So we were unhappy. So, okay. So we didn't do a good job there. We didn't write an exam that our students could totally crush and gain confidence, right? Easy, get in, get out in an hour and gain confidence. It did neither of those. It lost your confidence and you got angry, which is reasonable. And it took more time than we wanted to. So both of those things were broken. We learned from that. Okay. Lessons learned. But there were other grading concerns. And we said, you know, it's low. We, this, we've actually, by the way, you know, we taught this class a lot, a lot here. We baked in the points of this. This is an absolute graded course. It's not a curved course. So we baked it in basically assuming, okay, the quest should be around the average is 25. Now let's do the other stuff. When the quest is below, we didn't do a good job. And it means that it throws off what we think the distributions will be at the end. We're not going to curve it, but we're worried about that. So we need your grades to go up. So we need to have a question on a question or two on the midterm that's very solid and can replace. Now, I want to say this. In the past, how we have done a quest clobber is what's called a z-score, okay? Here's what happens. What you do is you look at how you sit related to the mean. Remember, this is kind of a curve, right? Whatever the average is, you look to where you sit. Are you above the mean by one sigma? Are you below the mean by one sigma on the quest? Then you take the midterm, and we're talking about only, we're talking about the quest clobber is the questions on the midterm that are exactly clobberable, like it's the CE and number representation stuff, right? No, nothing else, just for that part of it. They're gonna be labeled. They and they'll be labeled, 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 exactly. Huge label, this is the quest clobber question, okay? What typically what we had done, and this is just a historically, this is what we, we would have done until now, until my announcement, we would have said, whatever those numbers are, whatever your relation to the mean is, let's say you're one sigma above, meaning, you know, you get above your neighbors. So it's kind of a curve. You get above your neighbors, us one sigma above, but you get, let's say you're one sigma below on the quest. We go back and map it back and figure out what would one sigma above been on the quest, and that's your new grade. So what that means is, it's only if you do better than you did before. So it only affects half of the students. Meaning if all the students are sitting with a bad quest grade, only half of them can benefit because they have to do better than, than they did before on, against other people. We are changing that for the first time ever. Ever in 60 we are changing that. So that the clobber is going to be based on either the curve or the raw score map, basically raw score. You let's say out of thirty. Let's make this. Let's make the question in the midterm around the quest material out of thirty. Whatever score that is out of thirty, compare with your actual quest score out of thirty. If the if the midterm is higher, it's a new score. 
okay? And if that's better, well, that's your new grade. Or if the curve is better, then that's your new grade. So whichever is better for you, we'll do that. That's a big deal. So we're giving that to you, never done before in 6 2 history. It's always been a Z-score. It's always been a standard deviation-based thing. Now it's the raw score as well. So that everyone could benefit. If, if literally everybody benefit, if, here's an example. If everybody aced the curve, let's say everybody gets either, you know, 28, 29, or 30, well, the problem is only people, let's say, so the average is 29. Well, the 28s are below and they couldn't get a benefit in the old way. Now they can all get a benefit. You get it? Now you can all get 28, 29, 30 on the quest. It's a big deal. We're listening to you. We're fixing it. Okay. So that's new. And we're making sure you all know that. Number one, project office flowers were way, overloaded. So, uh, oh yeah. Uh, go, go, go. Gets a go back. Special, uh, gets a point if, if they can repeat what just Dan, Dan said. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody... <laughs> play the, play this video at 2x on youtube and see if you can understand a single word of let's see what we got here okay next yeah, but 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 the, the point is this is no. good for you this is really good for you yeah we're listening and we're listening and we want by the way we want to see the numbers go up like literally we would be happy high-fiving unlike everybody else they're like oh i can't give all a's we can give all a's this is an absolute graded course if you all rock the quest and get all a's we want that we're not trying to separate you and the weed from the shaft no we want you all to do really well all right project office hours overloaded okay we noticed last week that project office hours people were not getting their help in projects and i think it's factored two things I think it's because people had to do project one alone because you, so you had nobody to talk to. And two, we were using Zoom and Zoom doesn't allow people in a traditional project office hours held in the WAS. There's a whole line of people out the door and they're all helping each other while they're waiting to see a TA or see a staff member. So we switched over to Discord to try to resolve. We did that last week. We did it dynamically in the middle of a week. We did that, okay? So that's the first thing. When you're in Discord, have conversations, teach each other to debug, work each other, okay? Be really support each other. This is an absolute graded course. There's no reason you need to compete with each other. Rock star helping each other. Love that. Love that. Love that. Two workload concerns. Okay. I'm glad that I'm glad to hear that some of the folks are appreciating discord. We know that this is a hard week. We know we actually circled this week. Bora and I and Steven and, and CC and all the other heads TAs, we circled weeks like three, four, five, and six as being, a re it's like the hardest part of the class. You've got to learn your C. You've got to get in your, your, your risk five. You've got a project, back-to-back -back project. It's the hardest time of the class. If we can get past that, it's more relaxed. I have a note I want to make sure, make sure you guys know this. There is no lab for week six. We're in week five. There's no lab for week six. Week eight has a really light lab. Week nine has no lab. You guys hear this? So it gets easier. This is the hard, if you can bear with it. And by the way, I would prefer that it's hard early so that you know what you're getting into come drop date. It, the worst thing we can do is do a, a, a bait and switch where it's easy, 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 easy. And then all of a sudden drop day hits and it gets harder. That's unfair. So we made it hard. Not that we made it hard. It just happens to be this is the hardest part of the semester. Not that we intentionally, this is just where it all packed in. You got to like get, get your C and your risk so you can get onto really good projects. So it's hard. So again, no lab for week six. Uh, eight has a really easy lab. Nine has no lab and week seven is going to teach you the tool that you need for project three. So it's all awesome. Okay. So this is the hardest part. If you can survive this, we're going to have a lot. It's an easy road. You climb the steep road. It's coasting after this. We are giving you three more project slip days. Woo! So this allows you to relax, let your stuff, if you need to get a good night's sleep, get a good night's sleep. We want you to consider your health. I, this is why we have our lab check-ins. One of the questions we should ask you is, how's your health? We need you to focus on your health, make sure you're doing okay. And maybe one other class is busy just when yours is, so fine. Use some slip days to react to that. Again, you now have six slip days, okay? Big deal. Here also, important thing, we are giving con control to you. I mean, we had so many exactly. of these, these, these requests in the last minute. Can I please, exactly. you know, something happens. Yes, exactly. Of course, things are going to happen this semester. Exactly. Try to pace yourself. We give this to you to try to pace yourself. Exactly. Um, and if you need extra time, well, you have six days now. Uh, but manage yourself, you know, front load whatever you need to. Yep. Um, take care of, of yourself. Take care of other classes. Yep. And this is the second biggest one. We are moving project two to a partner project. We thought and giving 2A three more days. 
the reason for this is we think that the reason people were having such long lines is that they're all solo. You can't ask your friends. And we said, you know, there's a trade-off of this. When you go to a partner project, there's a chance that one partner may not learn all the things because one, they divide it in half and one person learns half, the other person the other half. We want all of you to learn all of it. So help each other learn teach each other from a learning community. And then maybe you'll each answer each other's question. We've seen that the numbers go down significantly once these are partner projects, but we are still remain concerned that we want you to learn all of the material. So both of you teach yourself all the material. How you divide it up is up to you. We maybe give some best practices on Piazza, but we want you to know that we are thinking about your workload concerns. Project two is now a partner project. Go find your best buddies, go pair up, find somebody, work together. And you also have three more days for project two A to support that. So these are big deal changes that will hopefully fundamentally change your workload in the next couple of weeks. Also, people are asking about Quest retakes. We made a deep decision. This is a very deep decision that we're only gonna ask for Quest, Quest retakes in the most extreme cases. So your camera dropped out for two seconds as it fell off your desk, you pulled it up. We're gonna say fine to that. So only in the most extreme cases we're gonna let you know what they are. We've had to write a full new exam. This is hard to do, by the way, especially in Prairie. Let's not just write it on paper and then print it in a PDF and go. You have to write all the auto graders. It is hard and CC and I and Bora and Steven and the staff are working on it. It's hard, but we are still, we're making sure it's right. We're making sure it's beta tested really well. So give us some time for this, probably next week until we let you know. You now have a regrades. You've seen your go, we're gonna really, we're gonna release the first exam. You'll see your, or at least the crack it. You're gonna see your, your scores and the questions you were asked on the original exam, but because we're releasing that, we can't can't reuse that. So now we have to write a whole new exam. We didn't plan on that. So that's going to give us some more time for this. I know this is hard, but, but give us some more time for this and we'll let you know uh, in the next week or so if you're going to need to do this. But fewer people, far fewer people are going to need to do a retake than before. We're mostly going to trust you on uh, uh, using the Berkeley Honor Code on that kind of thing. So if you, you know, my camera dropped out for a second, I cover my clock, we'll probably wave all that. We'll let you know, okay? So we'll let you know what the, what the line is. And don't worry about what those questions are. Am I on the list? We'll look at the list. We'll look at your, what you commented about what it is. We'll look at your videos and we'll make that pass. That takes a lot of time. Give us the time to do that. We'll do it right. And we'll make sure that the people who do to retake have a good, very solid exam. We're going to ask a survey. We're going to make sure we're going to do a check-in on how things are going, how these, how you're responding to these new policy changes. We're just, I'm sorry for going over a couple of minutes. There's a survey coming. And this one last comment I want to add, which is our staff has said, Dan, can you remind the students that we need to set some boundaries? People are know these other, you know, they know our staff from you know, other classes and they're DMing them on Facebook. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with this? Outside of their hours where they're being paid, they can't do that. We have actually, the union says that students can only work for a certain number of hours. We've allocated them for that support hours, for project office hours. And if you're asking there, they have to say, we're telling them they have to say no. This is not fair for you to ask all this other time. There are other students also. Not a single person on our staff, aside from Bora and I, are not other students. Everybody else is a student too, and manage their own classes. So we need to not have, we need to have some boundaries and work with the students within the space of the office hours and et cetera we give you, but please no DM on Facebook and no DMing on all those other things, okay? They're, they're, I'm, I've forced them to say no to those because it's too much work for them and that's it, okay? Very reasonable. That's it, we're over time. Thank you very much, yeah. folks. Bor, you wanna say the last okay. couple of words? Oh, just one thing. Uh, guys, no, no matter what the, how do you feel about the quest, you can pass pretty much any C interview question with the knowledge that you have. 15 is good enough to yeah. pass an interview question yep. um, and so feel good about that we are going to make sure that you feel the same you know, there are less assembly level questions although there are in, in interviews uh, you'll feel like that in, in in two weeks in just two to three weeks and then we'll move on i mean um i i, I feel good about what we have accomplished so far so yep we'll just good keep stuff going. good stuff Folks, keep up the good spirits. I know the spirits were low after the quest, after the project one and two workload, but we're trying to do these things to help you guys. We really feel for you and we hope you can get through these couple of weeks. We know that here's a couple more office, I'm sorry, more slip days, partnerships. Find your good partners, folks. Find some partners for project two. Getting a great partner can make a really big deal, okay? We care about you. We're thinking about you. Tell us what else we can do. Uh, give us, we'll do the survey and we'll have a chance for you to tell us any more we can do. We wanna help you guys make this class the best class on campus. Thank you so much, folks. We'll see you next week. Woo! All right. All right. Take care, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right.